Hello everyone, welcome back to Introductory Remote Sensing. My name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. The topic for today is uh, spectral indices with a particular focus on the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index or NDVI. For the course today we're going to be working in SNAP again, that is the Sentinel application um, from the European Space Agency product uh, developed for analyzing and accessing satellite data from the European Space Agency. The application has a number of toolboxes integrated within it for working with Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-3 data. Um, I would like to point out that it's also very versatile in that you can make use of a huge range of other optical sensors and we'll also be looking at a Landsat scene today. So in this exercise we will be calculating NDVI or a Sentinel-2 and a Landsat scene. Let's start by loading the Sentinel-2 image. Remember that we can um, open directly the zipped folder that we retrieve off the um, off the web and today I'm going to be opening up image from 2017 August the 25th so our lab is based up in Darwin um, and August is at the end of the dry season let's just open this image to have a look at it we can right click on the name and say open RGB image window and we have the choice of opening up either a natural color view or a false color infrared scene. Let's start with a natural color so we're putting band 4 in the red channel, band 3 in the green channel, band 2 into the blue channel. If we click on, before I do that let me just click on this drop down list and have a look at our available bands 13 bands in a Sentinel-2 image. Remember there's two band 8s, band 8 and band 8A. That's why although the numbers run to 12, there are actually 13 bands. So when we open an RGB window, band 4 corresponds to 665 nanometers, band 3, 560, band 2, 490. So this will give us a, a true color representation, very similar to what we would see if we were looking out the, the window of an aeroplane. So true color meaning similar to what we would see with our own eyes. Takes a little while for the scene to load up. Um, in case you're wondering where we are in the world, we are up in the north of Australia, the northern boundary of Kakadu National Park, looking at the mouth of the South Alligator River. Um, definitely the end of the dry season, we can see a very brown landscape, a little bit of green left in the river channels. Uh, let's see how we would go about developing the NDVI index for the scene. Let's first just load up another RGB image. Um, using the false color infrared composite. Remember now that we are putting band 8, which is in the near infrared, into the red channel. And just to show that again, when we use the false color infrared, we're placing band 8 into the red channel, band 4 into the green channel, band 3 into the blue. So um, what we're looking at in this image then is areas of red indicate photosynthetically active vegetation and this is great as a composite image but if we want to get to this level of information in a single um, index that's when we turn to NDVI. Just to further recap from last week using the spectrum view optical tools spectrum view I'm just going to have a quick look again at the 
spectral profile of this image. Remember that we just need to highlight this icon here. And when we click in the image, it will plot the spectra for us. So we have reflectance on the y-axis, the wavelength, nanometers on the x-axis. If we move our cursor over the C, you can see that there's a big difference in the response over land and in the ocean. Um, pretty much every, all the longer wavelengths are absorbed by water. Only some of the shorter wavelengths are reflected. Whereas when we get over land and vegetation, we see this bigger response, particularly in the near infrared regions. So if you're, what we're going to do with NDVI is NDVI is, a, is the ratio based on the near infrared channel and the red channel. So if we look at this, this peak, when, whenever we go over very vibrant green vegetation, which is showing up red in this image, we see the strong peak, the, the difference you know, above 700 nanometers, we see this, this series of peaks. And what we're really seeing is that band four is the red channel, 665. Band eight is up at 842, so that's in the, the near infrared. So if we were to look here at the difference between the red and near infrared channels, we can see that that's what's very much strongly responding to vegetation is that what we're going to do with NDVI is really explore the magnitude of the reflectance response between as we move from red to near infrared channels. So how do we calculate NDVI? And there's a couple of different ways of doing it. We're going to start by using first principles. So we're going to go to raster and band maths. Now the band maths tool is basically just a calculator. It allows us to perform calculations on the underlying pixel values in each image. So let's give this, we, this is our target image. Let's give it a new name. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it calc NDVI because it's a calculated NDVI index. Um, and here we have an expression that we can enter. So the syntax is quite simple. If we want to refer to band eight, we just type B8. NDVI is the ratio of the near infrared to the red. And we calculate it by subtracting red from near infrared and dividing that from near infrared plus red. So the way we would type that in, in an equation would be near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red. That's the formula for calculating NDVI. However, when we're using band maths, we need to relate this to the specific bands. So the near infrared channel is band eight. So we'll replace that with a B8. Eight. and the red channel is band 4. So we'll replace red with band 4. Do the same here. Band 4. And now we have our equation for NDVI. So when we say OK, that calculation is run. The extra band that we have created is added to the bands of our image and that's displayed here on a color scale from black to white and if we want to see what these values actually mean we can use the pixel info tab over here bands and as we move this around we can see the calculated NDVI value um, showing over here so as I move that 
for the areas of bright white we see quite high numbers 0 0.68 remember that NDVI runs on a scale from minus 1 to positive 1 and it's really an index of vigorous healthy vegetation so the most vigorous dense green vegetation would have a value of 1 um, if we move over water we see that we move into negative values that's because all of the near infrared range is being absorbed and that pushes us into negative values so for land applications we're really looking at values from about zero up to one and bear in mind that we're in although we're in the tropics this is a dry savanna region um, we'd only really get to values of one over very lush grassy floodplains or over tropical forests in areas like this the maximum that we'd get at this time of year would be about this 0 0.7 or so and we can see um, some lower values here among floodplains as soon as we touch water we should see negative values popping up now the color scale that we're currently using from uh, black through to white it's not very satisfying so let's have a look here in the bottom left hand corner next to our navigation tab we have a color manipulation tab if we click that um, you see that there's a number of options for the color editor we have basic sliders and table options let's go to basic and you'll see that we have a color ramp listed here it's currently unnamed and that goes from black through to white and you'll see that our data currently span a range from minus 0 0.5 to 0.5 what I'd like you to do is click on the color ramp and you'll see there's a whole host of ramps available let's choose something that's more suitable for what we're looking at um, so NDVI, let's let's go with this Meris Vegetation Index. That's a ramp going from browns through to dark green, which is more intuitive for our purposes, where healthy vegetation will now be shown in, in green, and parts of the landscape with a very low NDVI in brown. Um, let's also compare this to the natural color image so let's close our false color infrared now we just have the natural color and our NDVI over here and to look at them together we'll choose window tile vertically come back to navigation and let's zoom into actual well zoom all and then zoom into actual pixels Remember that we can move this little window around and that'll move both displays as long as these two icons are ticked. So spend a bit of time navigating around and we can compare how the index displays what we see from the true color image. coming over the island here and this is where it's, it's quite important is if you know in true color it looks like this is very green vigorous vegetation that's what our index would also suggest moving over here to more of a savanna area it's got a very brown appearance uh, in, in true color but our index would suggest that there is quite a lot of uh, photosynthesis taking place in this region. I'd like you now to close both of these images and come back to our product explorer. Now the way that we developed NDVI was by first principles using band mats but it is a very common 
index and there are many other useful indices and these are of course packaged through the menus so the fastest way of calculating this index for future reference I wanted to show you the band maths option as it provides a lot of flexibility and you can make some customizations but if you're looking for an off-the-shelf option then just head over to the optical tab thematic land processing and you'll see we have a number of vegetation radiometric indices um, multiple ones to choose from here NDVI processor choose your input image your output target and you can specify your processing parameters you'll see here that the red source band and the near infrared source band haven't been selected and that's because it will make use of the most appropriate band so it's based on the wavelength and it will choose the appropriate band we can just say run um, doing it this way it's slightly different in that we are, are writing out a separate file which will pop up in a minute wait for that to complete and then it will tell us that it's been successfully written we say OK close that interface and it's now added it as a separate file you can see the file name with NDVI added on the end if we look inside here bands we have our NDVI image again What's nice about this approach it's very easy then to export that we can just go file export and we can export to geotiff or another format um, i would actually recommend geotiff in most cases readable by by many um, gis packages and another useful option is to go file export other and view as google earth kmz what's nice about this is that it exports the the bundled kmz which you can easily open up in google earth and display this image um, against the google earth backdrop so thanks very much i uh, hope you found that useful we're going to pause it here now and i'll continue in the next video by moving on to the Landsat 8 scene. So see you in the next session.